JK Rowling is being smug on Twitter again. And <laughs> to be fair, now that we have the sales numbers for Hogwarts Legacy, she, <laughs> she really does have every reason to do so. A dreadful news, which I feel duty-bound to share, activists in my mentions are trying to organise yet another boycott of my work, this time of the Harry Potter TV show. As forewarned is forearmed, I have taken the precaution of laying in a large stock of champagne. <laughs> and again, considering Hogwarts Legacy sold 256% over its target mark, resulting in a profit of some, well, we'll say profit, sales, not profits, theoretically, of £684 million. Well, I think we can quite safely say that the effort to boggy court Hogwarts Legacy, box court, I was about to say there somehow, to boycott Hogwarts Legacy has probably been one of the least successful boycott attempts in human history as it has earned J.K. Rowling not perhaps an entire mountain, but at the very least a hill of solid, cold, hard British pound sterling. <laughs> and so again, there is uh, <clears throat> it's no surprise that she's feeling a wee bit smug at the moment. However, hold up a second there. Why is this the case? Why did the Hogwarts Legacy sell 256% more than expected? Bearing in mind, when companies make games like this, they do a fair bit of market research. They do may come up with a reasonably educated guess as to what their title is likely to sell. And with a major title like Hogwarts Legacy, that was probably a fairly high estimate. Was the game just that amazing? Well. Not really. It's a perfectly serviceable video game for what it is. The combat is alright, the storytelling is cliché but still effective, and most importantly, the team clearly did put a fair bit of effort with a handful of notable exceptions like the lack of Quidditch for example, to make it a Hogwarts video game. Right? They made it a fan experience, which is something that so many people have been so desperately lacking for the last few decades. A video game and a piece of entertainment in general that actually gives a shit about what the people who like that thing might like about it. <laughs> what a stupid concept. Of course, that in and of itself I don't think is enough to explain this, because is there? This game received a hell of a lot of backlash, and that I think, more so than anything, is probably the reason why it was so incredibly successful. Because obviously, Harry Potter is still a very large franchise, no doubt about it. It still has a scores of fans, etc. It still sells to this day. But it was getting a bit old, and it wasn't a key core entry in the Harry Potter franchise. And the previous entries, like Fantastic Beasts for example, flopped disastrously in large part because they had nothing to do with goddamn Harry Potter. And this one has far more to do than that. But the backlash to it, the fact that a unified progressive left decided to try and boycott the game and had everyone else laughing at them, well that created enormous positive buzz. Because all the normies saw was every single YouTuber they knew and loved going, yeah this is a great game, it's really cool. And all the right people hate it, so you should like it too. Creating the mainstream perception amongst the normies that, okay, not only is this a good video game, but the stupid people don't like it, so I should buy it. Hell, I bought it primarily for that reason, and did a couple streams on it as well, which I know for a fact guaranteed at least a couple more sales, and I'm on the smaller scale of the spectrum, everything considered. Then, if, we, if, if this assumption is correct, and at the very least, it is a portion of it, right? Then what is going to happen to the TV show? Because the uh, left-wing backlash is pretty much the same. Harry Potter series is coming to HBO and nobody wants it. <laughs> really? Nobody, eh? Oh. HBO baffles fans with Harry Potter reboot series, defense of J.K. Rowling's role. Baffles fans. What the hell happened? Harry Potter and the HBO TV remake. HBO's promise of a faithful Harry Potter adapted highlights how pointless this show really is, etc, etc, etc. On it goes. <laughs> like, 
Again, they haven't given up on trying to fight this losing battle for some mysterious reason. But the other side of it, the positive side of it, is far less prevalent at the moment because, well, the trend has kind of come and the trend has kind of gone. Now, obviously, it's going to be picking back up again when the actual TV show releases, but that's going to be years away. Years of near constant negative news cycles of Harry Potter and Hogwarts Legacy and the TV show. How did that work out for Trump again? <laughs> No, you can't really compare Harry Potter to Trump as a you know, one to one. But my point is, years and years of universally negative media coverage, no matter how little people trust the mainstream media, will have an effect. Even more so as even well, her allies are unlikely to defend her overly vehemently, J.K. Rowling, that is. The more optimistic middle ground of the progressives are thinking, hmm. Well, the boycott did fail. Could we co-opt this somehow? Could we could we make this our thing? And yes, they very well might be able to. HBO CEO calls J.K. Rowling transphobia controversy a very online conversation. Which, to be fair, he's hardly wrong in. And apparently, well, you see, HBO's main concern here is simply what's on screen. They don't care. They, they don't... They're not going to get involved in a very nuanced, very online conversation, as he says. You know, we're not going to talk about that anymore. It's a very online conversation, very nuanced and complicated, you see. Because all HBO cares about is making good television, right? Well, ever since they uh, decided that they couldn't have too many white people on TV, in House of Dragons at least. Mm-hmm. Yes. HBO. All about that quality content and that alone. Harry Potter TV series now is with J.K. Rowling executive producing as well. So this is also an interesting point. J.K. Rowling is not one of us, quote unquote. She is exactly what the label has well named her. A trans-exclusionary radical feminist. With the latter part there being the important thing. She is a, well, female supremacist, pretty straight up, of the good old fashioned feminist kind. The ones that we were well, yelling at rather loudly a few years ago, until realizing, hold on, we have a significantly larger enemy at hand. And a de facto peace treaty occurred. But this means that she is all for the usual diversity initiatives. For example, when a um, cursed child, some sort of uh, acting thingy bob doodly doodly doodly, 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 I don't know, or nor do I care, decided to create a black Hermione, J.K. Rowling was all for it. In fact, she even, falsely, mind you, stated that she had never explicitly said at any point during the books that Hermione was white, which I'm not even going to bother bringing up all of the examples of because that literally made the round on my channel and everybody else's about five million times. And that, yes, no, she had explicitly said that Hermione was white. Pale, in fact. So, what does this mean? Well, in all your likelihood, the TV show will be a very diverse affair. And, <clears throat> isn't it? Hogwarts Legacy 2 was very diverse forced in certain aspects, like for example the uh, transgender character, the woman in the bar, who was apparently voice acted by a woman who they, they put a voice changer on top of to fix. <laughs> uh, incidentally, the mod unscrabbling the voice changer was swiftly banned from every single modding site that hosted it for obvious political reasons. <clears throat> Furthermore, Hogwarts itself is unbelievably diverse, having students from literally everywhere, and makes several changes to the lore of the universe to accommodate a more diverse backstory. Like for example how African magic casting without using a wand is just as powerful and valid as the western style of using a wand, which I have been told is absolute bullshit. Now, I frankly care that not care English, I don't care over much about Harry Potter as a universe. And the thing is, in Hogwarts Legacy, it all came across as, well, rather performative, straight up. It was the progressive skin suit pulled over the video game as a finishing touch kind of thing. Once they were done actually making any everything else, they went like, okay, um, 
that that and that character needs to be brown um there, there needs to be a transgender character to toss that in somewhere etc it came across as very well callous which is what it probably was it was literally a last minute in the attempt to avoid some of the critique which failed miserably because well once these people have decided they're not satisfied they can't be satisfied by definition in fact and so, a diverse HBO TV show will not please the progressives. It can't please the progressives because, again, they have already gone out as far as they possibly can to denounce it. It is already something that nobody wants. It'll gonna, it's going to screw even them over if they change their tune right now, as it will also mean embracing J.K. Rowling and her transphobia. This is one of those occasions where... It is actually rather difficult for the professional hypocrites to change their position rapidly because this is one of the key core tenets of their religion. Women can be men. Men can be women. And there is no distinction between the two whatsoever. It is difficult to break with this. And so they won't give a shit. Even if Hermione is black, even if the, every single member of the cast is... is south of the Saharas. It ain't gonna matter. Meanwhile, the people on my side of the fence are gonna look at that and go, hmm, I don't mind the skin suit, necessarily, but now you're making it more obvious. I'm probably gonna start tuning out. We'll still cover the boycott of it, we'll still laugh at the progressives saying shit like this as the game sells like actual hotcakes, but we'll probably cover it a lot less. We'll be a lot more wary of it. We'll begin critiquing JK Rowling a lot more. That positive buzz will begin dying down and down and down and down. Till the point where, basically, my position would in all due likelihood be... Fuck both of them. In fact, that was my original position. <laughs> If Hogwarts Legacy could somehow have both succeeded and failed at the same time, I would be one very happy puppy. <laughs> but tragically, that quite didn't happen, so I didn't get my ideal worldview, did I? On the other hand, the normies, too, are going to be a bit turned off about this, because the normies, of course, grew up on this. This is Harry Potter to a normal person, to somebody who knows nothing about the online discourse at all, nor even gives a shit about it. This is Harry Potter. A black Hermione is going to have them show, turning on their television going, What? That's, that's not Hermione, though. Like, I, I read the books and everything. I, that's, that's not Hermione. And maybe, you know, they'll get the virtue saying, like, okay, you know, representation. But it'll take them out of the TV show. And nothing kills entertainment faster than that loss of the connection between the viewer and the entertainment. Once you break that unspoken contract that you're both going to ignore the bad CGI, you're going to ignore the derpy set locales, etc., and just accept the illusion, everything becomes worse. And when you then also further amplify that with a lot of negative buzz, you're probably going to looking at a rather difficult to sell project, like the Rings of Power. The Rings of Power to a normie was just more Lord of the Rings, and surely that must be a massive success because it's the Lord of the goddamn Rings. Amazon had literally promised their investors that there was no way this could possibly fail, no matter what they did to it. And well, <laughs> turns out to have been a bit of an optimistic uh, assumption, as no, you absolutely can ruin something. And putting in black elves who can't even goddamn act in your TV show, making girl boss Galadriel, etc., that is what's going to ruin the immersive eff immersion effect for normal people as well. To the point that even a week long boycott or more boycott, um, ban on reviews, couldn't save the show. All the normie interest in the world couldn't save Lord of the Rings. Can it save Harry Potter? Mm, I don't know. At the end of the day, the question comes up to how large of a percent of Hogwarts Legacy's success was down to three primary factors. The first, obviously, being the popularity of Harry Potter, which we can assume is major. The second being the unpopularity of the boycott, which was huge. 
and the people pushing the unpopularity of the boycott, the quote-unquote right-wingers, the conservative point of view. So this group isn't going to like the diversity. This group is going to be at best be ambivalent and slightly annoyed at the diversity and considering the recent Bob Light drama, probably looking for a target to strike out at as well as wokeism is getting less and less popular by the day, they hardly doubt that is going to change in two years time. And the final group of people, the one who would support diversity and the only ones who would support diversity for diversity's ex English, diversity's sake explicitly and implicitly, well, they've, they've placed their entire religious stake on hating it. Hmm. I suspect that if HBO were intelligent here and gave it a long lick on the finger, held it up, they'd feel a strong rightward gust right about now. And if they were smart, they would turn their sails to take advantage of it. I don't think they're going to be. In fact, I think, if anything, the TV show has far more of a chance of being a flop than the game does. Because overall, generally less interest, I think. Again, it depends, you know, how much of a percentage was this, how much of it was this, how much of it over there, and how much of an increase in the fan percentage has Hogwarts Legacy caused. And bearing in mind, there's going to be a couple of years before the show even begins, uh, you know, releasing. It's an interesting question, but I have a sneaking suspicion that this is going to be those shows that is going to be defined more by the rights reaction to it for the first time in like a decade than any other show, more so than the left wing's reaction to it. And if they decide to screw over the conservative side of the audience, I suspect that it might cause an enormous flop. Where it's going to make a lot of people begin scratching their heads and going, hmm, why? But Hogwarts Legacy was so popular. Why, why did this happen? And uh, we, in all due likelihood, will know, as always. Do let me know what you think in the comment section down below, though, because this is an interesting topic, isn't it? Again, you got to subdivide it into those three groups. Who was the most influential? Would a boycott have worked if it wasn't for the YouTube sphere and the right wing? Would it have been less successful merely? Or would it have been vastly more successful? Would the real fans have been affected by the progressive boycott? Do they even listen to them? So on and so on. Really, the TV show is going to have to be what tells us that, but um, my instinct says it's probably going to be receiving a lot more flack. We'll have to wait and see. Again, do let me know what you think in the comment section. And until next time, I have been Arch. Thank you all very much for listening. And I hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.